Welcome back to Search of Tip Clips. Well, I've got a really fun one for you today. And this is to show you a little bit of a variation on a stitch you might have already done a bunch of different times. But the way I found out about it and figured it out is when I was working on my newest pattern release, Wrap Me Up. And this has um, kind of a curved bottom edge and bands on the sleeves. But I was looking for an edge stitch that would be decorative, but keep the edge flat. And I knew I didn't want to do just a three thread wide or um, a blanket stitch. So I started looking around and then I came up with this stitch. And I think you'll really like it for a lot of your upcoming projects. This is done on a sweater knit, a medium weight sweater knit. And you'll be seeing lots of hacks in it, of it in the future for summertime with um, a lower neckline. This one has a cowl on it. But I'm going to show you the raindrop stitch. That's what I've been calling it because the formation of the stitch reminds me of raindrops. So let me give you the setup on your serger. This is a two thread overlock stitch. You'll engage your subsidiary or upper looper converter. And I have a top stitch needle in the left overlock position and decorative thread. And this time I'm using a, an eight weight pearl crown rayon thread in the top stitch needle and serger cone thread in my lower looper. There is no thread in the upper looper. As I said, you've engaged your upper looper converter and I'll show you that at the machine. Now I have set my stitch length to 4.5, which is the longest one that my machine will do, but um, you can decide for yourself what you want for the um, length of your stitch. You can try it out on your fabric and it may vary depending on the type of fabric and weight that you're doing. So test that out on your scrap fabric to find out. And I'll also give you one more tip and you'll see it when I'm stitching. I think you get the best edge stitch with this when you press on fusible knit stay tape on the wrong side of your fabric because I've tried it without it and I found that the stitch kind of hung off the edge a little bit and wasn't quite as perfect looking on the edge without that stabilization. It's lightweight. It comes in black or white. It's available in my website store, gailpatrice.com. And um, it, it really just makes a difference in the finished product. Now, before we go to the machine, I, as always, like to ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You're welcome to ask questions, make comments uh, below, and I will get back to you quickly if you do have a question. So let's get to the machine and take a look at this stitch in action. And then I'm going to show you kind of in a part two of this, a really fun little fact on this. So let's get to the machine and stitch. I have the front of the machine open to show you how to engage the upper looper converter or subsidiary looper. Mine is attached to the upper looper and you can see before I put this in, there's a little prong on the end of this and that prong is going to snap into the eye of the upper looper. You can almost hear a little bit of a click when I do that. And uh, that will close the eye of that and allow me to do a two thread stitch without any thread in the upper looper. Some older machines may have an upper looper converter that is a separate piece. Check your little accessory bag or box and see if you have something that looks very similar to that in it. One last nice feature that I wanted to show you before we stitch is that on the Bernina L890, I have the memory function, which is the little heart that you see on the side of the um, screen right here. And I can tap that and save all of my settings and even name the stitch. So you can see I have a two thread flat lock wide with the left needle. I named it the raindrop stitch. My left needle tension is at 1.5. My lower looper tension is on nine. There's no thread in the right needle. There is no right needle used. And the upper looper converter is 
um, engage so that, that there's no thread or tension on that. On the left side of the screen, you can see my stitch length is set to 4.5 for this stitch, and I'm leaving my differential feed on one. All of those settings are variable, but I have saved those for stitching this on other types of fabrics and it's all set to go. So all I have to do is tap that little heart and it'll bring me to all of the preset tensions and stitch length. All of the settings are all taken care of. All set up at the machine. Again, top stitch needle in the left overlock position. Pearl crown rayon in the top stitch needle. My lower looper is threaded with um, surgical cone thread. So here is my little sample that I already ran off just to show you how beautifully this stitches out on the um, sweater net. And here is this, I'm going to do this um, demo at the, uh, the same piece of fabric. And I put the knit stay tape. Now, typically this is kind of a, kind of a plum colored sweater knit. I would probably usually use black, but I thought that the white stay tape would show up better on camera. But from the front, you can see it really doesn't matter whether I've used black or white. It, it doesn't show through at all. So I am going to stitch with the wrong side face up. So I'm going to stitch right along my stay tape. I'm going to trim off this little excess bit of um, the fabric edge. And I am going to get that right under. I'm going to get the edge of the stay tape right next to the knife. My cutting width or stitch width is on nine millimeters. This machine has a really nice wide nine millimeter stitch on it. So it works beautifully for this particular technique and for a lot of other techniques as well. So I'm going to stitch along on this. And one of my tips with decorative thread is when you're starting, always hold onto that thread chain in back of the presser foot until your needle takes a few stitches in the fabric itself. That way you eliminate the chance for stitch stacking or multiple stitches kind of bunching up on the starting edge of the fabric. And um, it works. it works quite well for that to prevent it. So let's give this a go. And I'll just cut that off. Now, this stitch doesn't look like anything at all on the right side but when you flip it over look at that don't they look like little individual raindrops easy as can be nothing to it at all now i told you that um i was going to show you a part two of this what does this stitch have in common with these stitches a reverse flat lock with ladders or the blanket stitch. And I think the blanket stitch is one of the most viewed tip clips that I have. Well, guess what? They're all the same stitch. Let me just show you how we do that. I'm not changing anything on the machine at all, except uh, let me give you my um, setup uh, settings also on this two thread flat lock. My left needle was on a tension setting of 1.5 and my lower looper tension was on a tension of nine. I cranked it way, way up. And as I said, the stitch length was on 4.5. I had my differential feed on one. I'm sorry, I didn't say that before. So the let's go to the blanket stitch first. And I'm just going to do that on that same plum colored fabric. And I have a piece of little wash away stabilizer on top of that. And I'm keeping all of my settings the same. And let me just bring this in. I think maybe I might drop the needle tension down to from 1.5 to one. 
That's the only modification I'm making on this. I'm holding onto my thread chain and let's stitch on this one. And this one I'm stitching with the fabric right side up and the stabilizer right on top of it. Alrighty, and let's cut this. And you've seen this on the tip clip for the blanket stitch. Here it is, just like this. I just don't want that light shining through it. But what we want to do with this is I like to lay this down and kind of support the fabric as I pull the stabilizer. And what this is going to do, you see the lower looper thread on the top of the fabric on the right side, but we don't want that on the right side. We want our decorative thread. So let's just gently pull on the stabilizer and get that decorative thread over to the right side. And there you have the blanket stitch. Now, one more variation on that. I'm not changing anything I'm except that I'm going to shorten my stitch length just a little bit from 4.5 I'm just going to bring that down to 2.5 this is a computerized machine that's why you hear that little beeping as I change that I'm leaving my um settings the same left needle tension is on one lower looper tension is on nine and don't forget those are settings on my machine yours may vary so you'll have to test it out on your fabric and on your machine and find the ones that work best and if you're not sure how to set it up just consult your owner's manual now i have the two fabrics i'm putting them right sides together and I am just going to trim off a little bit of the fabric, not a lot. I'm going to hold on to those thread chains. Get that little thread tail out of there. And let's stitch this and see what we have. And I do have a tip clip on how to do the reverse flat lock or the ladder stitch. So again, you see just my needle fabric on the top side of the fabric. So let's open up the fabrics and pull it apart. And there you have the ladder stitch. I did not change the basic setup. I just tweaked the um, stitch length and I lowered the needle tension just a little bit for the ladder stitch and um, for the blanket stitch. Those are the only changes I made. So isn't that cool? It's like three stitches for one setup. It's fantastic. Thanks for joining me today and happy sewing and surging and I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.